All right, so welcome back everybody. It is time that we do an update for home cellular internet. It's been a huge series on the channel. Been working this for months, trying to get you information as well as, well, teach myself what available options are out there. Now I wanna quickly let you know, in this video we're testing new routers, so I'm gonna give you an update there. We're gonna run a few speed tests. I am going to answer the question that everybody's been asking, how on earth do you find cell towers and figure out what service and all needs to work? So we're actually gonna to go to the computer. I'm gonna show you how to use that cell mapper website that I'm always talking about. A lot of people say they're frustrated and they don't think it works. It's, it's most likely because you're not clicking just a couple of settings, so I'm gonna walk you through that. I'm also going to answer some questions about the service and company that I've been with, um, some positives, some concerns, all the stuff that you've been asking here lately. So you may want to stay tuned. We're going to cover a lot of different topics here. And if you're just stumbling across this video, I highly suggest you go back and watch the videos on the channel. But what we're doing here, long story short, we live out in the middle of nowhere. There's no internet provided here whatsoever. I stayed on the Starlink wait list for well over a year, got four different delay notices, got fed up, got my money back, and found cellular internet. Now this is not hotspot off of your phone. This is not going to the big carriers and using their little hotspot devices. This is some serious equipment here. A lot of people do not know about cellular routers. So you'll actually put a data only SIM in here that connects to whatever local cell tower that you have. So this has some pretty amazing hardware in it, software, everything else that, well, this just doesn't have. Not to mention all these external antennas and features. So long story short, you get a boosted signal much greater speeds and all than you're typically gonna see on a little hotspot device or a cell phone. Uh, a lot of people just don't know about these. So up until this point, I've tested a ton of routers. I've went with several different companies. I have bought data plans directly from carriers like AT&T, literally walked in their store, bought plans there. And then I've started uh, with aftermarket third parties. That's who I'm currently with right now. I've did a couple of different companies. They've all been working. So I just got sent a couple of new routers to test by the company that I'm still with called NetBuddy. I have no affiliation with NetBuddy. I don't work for them. I don't work for any of the national carriers, none of that. I'm just a desperate guy that needed internet. I do social media for a living, so home internet is extremely important. I stumbled into finding out about this stuff. Y'all showed great interest. So here we are. We're keeping a series going and we're getting educated on it. Just want to let y'all know that. So NetBuddy reached out and said, hey, will you test some of our new routers? A lot of y'all have emailed me saying they're sold out of their routers. Well, this is most likely why. They just transitioned out of their previous routers. I still have one, that's what I'm running. And they're running some new routers right here. We're gonna test that in today's video. Now to answer a couple of concerns real quick and questions while I'm putting antennas and stuff on these. One, a lot of people wanna know, how's my service been working? been working great with the exception. I'm open and honest here now. I can care less. I want to be truthful. Um, I did go through a brief spell to where I was losing cell tower connectivity. Sometimes it'd be a couple times a week and then I had a very small spell where it was a few times a day and I'd have to go unplug my router, plug it back in and then lo and behold, I'm connected to the tower again. I wasn't dropping Wi-Fi. The, the device wasn't powering down. I don't know what was going on. I don't know if it was the device, the plan, or the tower. All I can tell you is, for the last probably two to three weeks straight, longer than that now, think about it, I have not dropped cell connectivity one single time. So it could have been a local tower issue. My internet's still been working great. And before that little spell, zero issues. But I thought I would mention that. So some of y'all's Probably the biggest concern that I keep hearing is people that look at NetBuddy, for example, and see that it doesn't have a brick and mortar store. They're out of New Jersey or somewhere. Um, and that's not that uncommon. A lot of people, well, run businesses out of homes and everywhere else. So I really don't know what to tell you on that. I don't talk to NetBuddy directly other than through email, same as y'all. That's been another big concern from people. Why is there no phone number? Why there's no brick and mortar store where I can talk with this company? I can't answer that for you. All, all I can tell you is they've answered my emails. I know some of y'all say sometimes there's a delay in getting your email answered. I totally understand that. They're probably a bit overwhelmed. Uh, this series has blown up so well and they're working with other social media people. I can't imagine how many people are contacting them. Now with that to said, I'm not defending that. I don't work for the company. I'm just letting you know their products have been working for me. 
I've had contact with them. We discuss things. They're using me now as a test platform. So it's working out great. All I can say is if you're highly concerned about there not being a brick and mortar or a direct contact line, well then don't make the purchase. They're probably not gonna be happy that I'm saying that, but I, I understand. For me, it hasn't been a concern. I know investing in equipment um, that's directly with a third party can be a bit intimidating because, well, you don't go run to Verizon, T-Mobile, or AT&T with aftermarket equipment and say, hook me up with a plan. That's just not the way it works. They want you to buy their equipment directly. So other than how do I find towers, see if I have service in my area, which we're gonna answer here in just a second, that's been the most common ones, you know, about the company. There's your answer there. And how my service has been, it's been the most common question other than that small little blip that I had. There's been no other issues. Now you can see what I'm doing right here is I'm connecting the external antennas. That's what makes these routers so amazing. So you can run them as is. These are Wi-Fi antennas on the side on this particular router. These are four different cellular antennas here. That's what makes them work so well. Now the other beauty is you can take these antennas right back off and connect to an external antenna. Well, you can't do that with most national carriers. Little you know, hotspot devices. And when you go to an external antenna, oh my goodness, I've seen dramatic gains here. Now your situation is gonna be different depending on how close you are to a tower, how congested it is. You may get one of these devices and it worked beautiful as is and you never have to connect to an external antenna. But if you're wanting more solid and reliable connection, greater speeds, yada, 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 an external antenna is a must. But hey, at least you can start with this, save up a little money and invest in the antenna. So what I'm gonna do today, we're gonna power these up. I've got cards for AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. We're gonna test them out as is, and then we're gonna to connect to my very nice external panel antenna by waveform. Um, I'm still running that. That was another popular question. There's a couple different types of external antennas. I have decided to stay with the panel antenna. I like the way it looks is my biggest reason, and I'm getting very good speeds out of it. So also, both of these routers that I'm testing today, this is kind of their new in-house router. It's 5G compatible, assuming you're in an area with 5G. Don't always believe the maps. I can't tell people that enough. Just because the you go check a carrier's map and it shows 5G on your house doesn't really mean you're in 5G. That stuff's almost line of sight. You gotta be very close. But do not let that intimidate you. So I've seen a lot of people reach out to me and say, 4G, these run on 4G LTE. That's slow technology. No, it's because you bought into the hype of the TV telling you that 5G is amazing. 4G is capable of some insane speeds. So I've spoke with several viewers that went out and bought some of NetBuddy's equipment. Uh, there was a couple people getting in the 400 megabits a second download, crazy uploads. Now this is exceptional speeds, don't expect that. Another guy, I think just emailed me yesterday, he's getting 240 megs down. This is all way better than I'm getting. That's, that's insanely good speeds. You're starting to talk some fiber stuff when you get in that four and 500 range. I'm just letting y'all know the capability is there in 4G LTE with the right equipment. Just depends on your tower and your situation. So what supposedly is better about these new routers as well, now the Cuddy before didn't support 5G, this new model does, it's on their website. But these also supposedly work on rural bands, so tower bands. You'll see that whenever you look up some of the tower search services that I'm gonna show you here in just a second. And the owner of NetBuddy was wanted me to test since I'm out in just the middle of nowhere and see if maybe I'm getting just some better speeds and better connectivity with these new routers that are supposedly picking up better bands. So that's what we're doing today. A little bit of testing and mainly just answering your questions. The other common question I was getting why are they sold out? Again, I think it's because they got new routers in. I just went on their website and I didn't see any out of stock notices. So for all the people that's been trying to buy, hopefully they're available to you now. Oh, and disclaimer, when I first started this series, I didn't get paid a dime for any of this, but NetBuddy did reach out with an affiliate program a while back. I make a whopping $10. Anytime one of y'all use my link to go and buy something. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the $10, but I'm not selling my soul for 10 bucks, if you know what I mean. But I wanted to mention that. I do get paid a small fraction. It does not change how I'm gonna talk about this. If they're junk and don't connect good and have issues, I'm gonna let you know. All right, so welcome to my new temporary permanent office. 
we've got to get some proper furniture and other things up here, but we just got done with the loft. So I just run a speed test. No point in showing this. This isn't truly really an installation video. It's just an update video. This is the current NetBuddy in-house router that I have. Basically what this seems to be replacing. It's very similar looking. And I just ran, this is over Wi-Fi right now, um, a speed test. So a little backstory. I used to hotspot off of my phone and I would literally get maybe three megabits a second download, sometimes three to seven up. Um, it was atrocious, it was horrible, and that's how I tried to run a social media business. It just did not work out. So went through all these routers, long story short, I'm running their in-house router now with an antenna, and look at my speeds. So 59.8 down, awesome. While that's no fiber, no blazing speed, that is more than fast enough to stream multiple TVs, do all my social media, you name it, but look at the upload, the insane upload that I constantly get. So download will occasionally dip down, like in say the 30s on highly traveled days. I have a four lane road near me, uh, like holidays and stuff like that, but I almost always average around 60. I've even got as high as 70. Upload is always consistently 70 plus, and on good days like today, 80, that's insane. I don't hardly know of anybody that gets 80 up. And where that's important is with like Zoom calls, Microsoft Teams, or me uploading social media content, videos, live streaming, gaming, things such as that. Speaking of gaming, for example, latency is very important. So idle latency was 43, download 100, upload 133. I'll let you apply that toward gaming. I do not game. By the way, that was on T-Mobile. Something else I wanted to answer for y'all. If you go on T-Mobile's website um, and I try to order T-Mobile Home Internet, which I did a while back, it says not available here at my address. However, if you look at T-Mobile's coverage map, I show full 4G LTE and they show 5G on the back side of my property, although I don't believe that. But I showed full 4G coverage. I went with NetBuddy's T-Mobile 4G just to try it. Blazing, well, blazing fast speeds. For me, it was the best of everything I tested. AT&T was very close right behind it. Now I've got an AT&T card in here. I'm not expecting crazy speeds. I'm gonna do some tests over the next few days for NetBuddy since they asked me to. Uh, but keep in mind, I'm right now I'm pointed directly at a Verizon and well, I guess T-Mobile hops off that tower because they both get the signal from the same tower, it seems like. My AT&T is a little bit different direction. So I'm gonna have to play with the antennas a little. But I have all the numbers and stuff memorized from my previous test. And I'm just trying to see, are these new routers an upgrade and a difference? So we're not doing hundreds of speed tests and antenna adjustments in this video. That's some stuff I'm gonna do off camera. By the way, if any of y'all purchased this new router, the antennas have completely moved. Now, sailor antennas are on the side, Wi-Fi is on the rear. That was not the case before. So another common question was, does their service, their plans work, say in a phone, your own personal hotspot? It's not typically the way it works with third parties. You purchase their router, their plan's already set up for it, and you purchase them both through that company. That was the other question. Do I purchase my plan through Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile? No, everything is done in-house through NetBuddy. All right, I'm showing 4G lit up here on the bottom, which is what I expect. That's what I have out here. This is just sitting up here, no external antennas. I'm not expecting blazing fast speeds, but let's see. Keep in mind, I used to get around three megabits with a phone, and now you can see what I'm getting right here with the router just sitting on the table with no antenna connections. So 10 to 11 down, I can already work with that. I would have been so thrilled to have that in the past. So right at 10, download, upload, Looks like it's gonna be around four and a half. Now what you can also do, these are somewhat directional. You can start spinning this around, go in different directions and running speed test and checking. All right, so I'm gonna power this down, remove the AT&T SIM and try my T-Mobile SIM. Let's see if it's already set up to handle that. Okay, I'm showing I am connected. And interestingly enough, 5G has it's not the color I was expecting, but it's lit up. And this is from T-Mobile, which told me not available here. All right, here we go. Looking very similar to AT&T. Oh, picking on up. 
So it was 12 down, six up. I can absolutely work with that. Again, your results may vary. You could wind up getting 100 in your area or you could get two. Just depends on your tower. I wanna show y'all something real quick. 5G just lit up on top of this. <laughs> Look, apparently I am getting 5G. Holy smokes. This is no external antenna sitting on top of my table. And I just got 49.1 down. Oh, see, it just lost 5G connectivity. This is why external antennas are, are so important in my mind. It'll really boost the signal, but that's insane. That's the highest download I have ever got on something sitting on the tabletop. So see now, it just reconnected to 5G again. You can tell probably the metal roof and everything that's going on is blocking the signal, but that kind of gives me high hopes for what this might do once we go back and install it to the external antennas. But let's test this Cuddy first. That was crazy fast for something sitting on a tabletop. All right, so while I'm connecting to the Cuddy right here, one thing worth mentioning, the Cuddy itself supports Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile from NetBuddy. Their in-house 5G router right here does not support Verizon, but it does support 5G, T-Mobile, and AT&T, just like this one. Now, if you look at the hardware specs and everything else, this particular router right here has got a lot more going for it than the Cuddy. But if you need Verizon, well, the Cuddy is your option right there. Okay, so I just stuck my T-Mobile card in the Cuddy. It lit up an odd color, which makes me think it's also connected to 5G. And the speed, sure enough, looks like that. So not as good of speed as that with the T-Mobile. I just want to do a quick comparison. But still excellent speeds nonetheless. And this has been my experience in the past. So step up into my attic here. This is the new... Suncom NetBuddy 5G router and this is their look guess a little bit older one now although I haven't had it on and has somewhat similar specs I can tell you these routers are a whole lot heavier than the Cuddy as well so I've got my same T-Mobile card in there you can see I am now hooked going to a 4x4 panel antenna on the outside. So by the way, if you're curious about those external antennas, I just did a video comparing a couple different types and I'll link it at the end of this, put it down in the description, do something with it. And just this quick, by the way, already booted up, showing 5G connectivity, ready to go. That particular router boots up way quicker than the Cuddy too. All right, here we are using my external antenna connected to the new style router with my T-Mobile card in it. Fingers crossed we see an improvement, although I'm not honestly expecting it. Okay, well, it is already a little faster. Okay, it's dropping back to about the range we were a little while ago. Although it was climbing towards 70 there for a second. So remember we got 58, 59 on the last test. This is looking very similar. And upload is usually between 70 and 80 for me. It bounces around and we're at 71. So getting very very similar results to the other router which is kind of what i expected they have similar specs okay to wrap this video up i want to show y'all how to use cellmapper.net okay when you open cellmapper agree to that a map's going to come up and i'm going to show you where i think a lot of people are going wrong whenever they search using this so you can scroll out because it's zoomed into the ocean always for some reason Let's just pick a random spot up here in Georgia of all places. So what you would do is find your home. Scroll in on the map and do that. So let's just say you happen to live right here in this general area. Now, if you click up here on menu, you got to go to provider. Most people are scrolling in on the map, I think, and it, they're like, I don't see towers anywhere. You have to come up here and select your provider. So first of all, this is a worldwide search. So I'm putting in the United States. And now we can scroll down and start finding like AT&T, United States of America, T-Mobile, all these other ones. This is what you want to do. You have to search each particular carrier one by one. Don't scroll on the map and think everything's just there for you. It's not the way it works. So let's just go to United States T-Mobile right here. Now the map just changed. All right, so now that I've selected T-Mobile, for example, by the way, do this for Verizon, AT&T, whoever, you can see all these towers just popped up. So let's just say, for example, you live in this general area right here. I'm gonna start going to the nearest towers and clicking on them. 
you see these boxes these triangles that just popped up what a lot of people don't realize is towers are highly directional especially near what looks like a major road right here you can see that tower is aimed to shoot up and down the road most people are under the understanding that a tower just goes out 360 degrees it's not correct at all so you can see if i live somewhere over here well this tower even though it's close to me it's not aimed where i live at all so let's go find another tower let's click on that one some towers are also repeaters so check that out. I just clicked on this tower. Now look at the big area that it's covering. So long story short, that's what you do. You zoom out, you find all the towers in your area, and you click on them until you find the one that's actually showing the shaded coverage over your area. And I also want you to understand every tower is different. Some of y'all are gonna see way better speeds than me. Some of y'all are gonna see worse. Your tower is gonna have more congestion on it, more people. The last little trick that I'll leave you with, I showed this in another video, but I have a timed outlet in there that turns my equipment off and then back on. You can set it to do it while you're sleeping, just say 2 a.m. for example, power it off for about 60 seconds to five minutes, power it back on. What a lot of people don't realize with cellular connectivity, this is your phone, this is routers, everything, anything that's connected to a cell tower, there is what's called a priority list. At least this is the way that I understand it. And the longer you're connected to this tower, the further down the list that you get. So whenever you unplug or disconnect and reconnect, you don't have to do this all day long, but one time a day, a couple times a day if you want, typically when you reconnect, hey, you notice you have better connectivity and faster speeds. That's because you just got moved back to the top of the tower's priority list. Why this happens, I do not know. But you can purchase cheap timed outlets off of Amazon that'll turn lights off and on, Christmas lights, whatever, or you can plug in your router and your Wi-Fi router if you have one in the house. Of course, this is all built in with this kind of stuff. Disconnect it, reconnect it, you're back at the top of the list. So hopefully you enjoyed the little tips here. Um, NetBuddy, I'm still testing your stuff. Thanks for sending it out. It seems to be of similar quality to the things I've tested in the past. Now you have more capability with like say 5G and Verizon right here on this new Cuddy router. Their new in-house router seems to be right exactly in line with the last one. And again, I checked their website. Um, things are showing in stock. And again, I told you all at the beginning of the video, if you use the link down in the description of our videos, I get, I think it's $10 anytime somebody goes and makes a purchase there. That helps me buy things like antennas and run tests and do other stuff. We truly appreciate it. You don't have to use that link. You can go purchase on your own. Then we get nothing and you got free information. Doesn't bother me either way. Thank y'all for watching. Thanks for making this series a success. I have some new testing coming up for cell phone boosters. Uh, coming up in the next few weeks. That's been another huge series on the channel. It's completely different than cellular internet. It boosts signal inside a house, would say a metal roof, any other problems. So we're gonna continue to dig in that a little more for people that live way out in the country like we do. Catch you on the next video. Drop a comment if I did not answer your question.